Go underway, shift colors. been a full six months since I arrived in Marathon and that is just too long for any of us I think. However I did some jobs and I got the seating area finished in the cabin and I've been reading a lot. Um, I, I've read Great Expectations, I've read Arabian Nights, I did a biography of Admiral Leahy and more. Now I'm working on a history of the uh, battle at Stalingrad and of course I spent three great months with Joanne and visiting here in Marathon with this great community. But it's time to get on the move. for me to still have a chart plotter out but I'm using it because I'm trying to cut through that little gap there it's hard to show you I know it's full of glare and stuff but I am trying to go through that pass right there right there don't want to hit that bank don't want to hit that bank and right now Agatha is steering to give me a break but she's kind of she kind of does this and um Okay. Alright, so this morning when I got off the mooring, as I slipped the last line, I just flung it. I just flung the line, the mooring line here. I got off the mooring pennant and I flung it and I ran back to the helm and I, and I ran back to the helm and then I started driving the boat, right? And I didn't even think about the fact that I might have flung this over the furling line. And you can see the damn thing fouled up in there. Now, it doesn't look unrecoverable. In fact, it looks pretty easily recoverable. So now that's what I'm going to set about doing here. Little by little, trying to fuck my mess here. 
weather seems to be settling down. It was pretty bouncy for a while there. Out on the uh, Hawk Channel side, it was really bouncy. But back there is Marathon. You can see it in the distance. There's the Seven Mile Bridge is directly behind me. You can see the tall portion of it. And I just passed uh, an area called Bullard, Bullard Bank. And I can show you in the, the inset here. But uh, I've just got about 20 miles uh, before my anchorage. Straight shot, 20 feet of water the whole way. Crystal clear water. I haven't seen a single fishing crab pot or anything like that yet. Before... Where are we going? Agatha, come on, Agatha! Yeah, how about get on course, Agatha? Anyway, yeah. Yeah, so that was stupid. <laughs> this is the second mooring line that had been tired, tied to the mooring ball. And when I cast that loose this morning, I let it get fouled on the furling mechanism for the head sail, which is like, die you stupid shit, you know? It's, but that's what I did. Um, because you get in a hurry when you've uh, cast off the second uh, mooring line and when you're single-hander and you're, of course, it's windy. <laughs> so as soon as you cast off the mooring ball, the boat begins to move backwards quite quickly. Well, I'm here in coastal Florida enjoying sailing in paradise and it's fucking killing me again. This time it's because of all these fucking crab pots and I realize now that that's my problem. That crab pot is following me. You can tell the camera's got this. We know that the propeller is fouled because I tried operating the engine and it doesn't. You can hear something bad. Um, and I know I'm just not making the speed I should be making. And I think it's because I'm dragging a fucking crab pot and have been for the last several miles. And I, the water is so silty, it's very difficult to see. And I, and I really don't know if I'm going to have any success with this. Um, Another mile and a half I'll be able to anchor to get into pretty shallow water. Two miles would be better if I could get that far. I'm making about one and a half knots and I'm absolutely towing this fucking crab pot behind me. And I can feel the rope. It's wrapped around the main rudder, which is why my main rudder keeps tugging to starboard. Now I understand that. Um, and it's clearly causing a lot of drag on the boat, so that's why I can't go any faster. Now, I'm going to try again. I think it was just so heavy. So I can't, I can't get up. It's fouled pretty well down there. I, I mean, I, I can tug the line. I can grab it with a boat hook, but I can't just pick it up like it's a single line. If it's, it's uh, I, I really don't know what the hell I got, or maybe I've got the box, the crab pot itself, stuck to me, and I'm just surrounded by the more of them. I'm probably gonna pick up another ten fucking crab pots along the way here. But for the moment, the boat's moving at two knots, which is better than I was doing 20 minutes ago. And, I, uh, and Agatha's doing a great job today, it's, uh, steering this boat in, even though she's got crab pot attached to the boat and all that stuff. Yeah. Oh my god, if I could just get inside the park boundary, then there'll be no more crab pots at least. And then you can see I'm getting pretty darn close here. I'm so pissed. <laughs> you know, early in the day when I sailed, I sailed the boat out. I you know, had the engine running, of course, to get off the mooring ball. It's the first soft drink in weeks, actually. I, I've almost completely cut out sugar. But I need to decompress and I don't want to drink alcohol right now. So. Alright, we're about a mile and a half away from my anchor drop location, my anchor drop point, which makes it about one hour away, which means by about 6.30 I'll be anchored 
and it'll be probably too dark to go in the water and cut off whatever needs to be cut off but it'll be there in the morning and I'm pretty confident in my anchor and you know with this extra crab pot I mean, it's not likely I'm going to drag anywhere but I'm pissed off just because you know there's so goddamn many crab pots here in Florida and everybody and their brother seems to put out hundreds of them and I know that they're catching stone crabs and lobsters primarily for the seafood industry and people love them and all that and I, and I get that it's a business and I, I get it's a livelihood but damn there's got to be ought to be some sort of rhyme or reason by which these people are confined to zones um, but I hit one um, so it was the day was going great I, I have to admit it was going great I, I left the marina the mooring field and then I got into um, got the sails up, had the engine off, only ran the engine for half an hour, and I sailed my way right through the seven mile bridge, which I was pretty happy for. And I, uh, and uh, Agatha, the self steering was working great. Uh, and got through the seven mile bridge, managed to make it all the way past Bollard Bank, Bollard Bank, I think it is. I'll, I'll show you on the chart. It's um, just a, a, sh a shallow spot. Got past that and pointed straight for Cape Sable, and I was doing good. And I took a nap, <laughs> and I was to sleep for about ten minutes, and then it was I don't I didn't notice it immediately, but I, I realized that you know, we are just not going very quickly, and my main rudder kept wanting to pull to starboard. I'm going what the fuck, and now I understand it fully. I'm trailing a crab pot, and I'm towing it, and I'm probably dragging on the bottom because it's got a really long line. So probably there's a big pot on the bottom dragging. And the line goes up and is hooked to my boat, and then the ball goes back, and that's what I see. And I can actually kind of grab it with a boat hook, but I just can't see what I'm doing. And I can't just one hand and pick it up enough to start cutting lines off. I just can't do that. And I, I... Okay, so let's talk a little about crab pots. In general, what you'll find out there is these wooden baskets that collect... Either the, they have the bait inside and they collect the stone crabs or the lobster, either one of those probably down here. And they mark the pot with their little styrofoam ball tied through a line. And so you'd assume it'd be like this, right? You'd have a, a line hanging vertically and that tells you where the pot is. But that is not the way it is. The reality is the line is much longer than the depth of water. In the case of the one I have, I know that the pot was at least 50 feet and trailing behind the boat. So very possible there's a trap like this lying in the water. The pot itself is not the hazard and a floating ball all by itself is not a hazard. Those are get pushed aside. This is a hazard right there. So now if I draw in my sailboat, um, now again I, I drew the, the ball over here which tells me the wind is going this way. So I've got a sailboat. I'm going to draw myself slightly heeled and I've got a keel and depending on where I pass over that this thing can possibly snag on the keel or it can snag on the rudder or the propeller. So if the basket is here and I pass by, it's going to snag. Now what happened to me though is after I snagged on the propeller, we'll forget that one, there's a basket over here being dragged along the bottom, kicking up all that muck and it's tied to the line which is wrapped around the propeller which has gone back down here to a ball and again this ball is at least 50 feet you know at least at least you know behind the boat at least 15 meters for sure and that was the problem yeah. <laughs> wow that was freaking busy um I just uh, took a look topside and there are, I thought I counted six styrofoam balls marking crab pots. Six of them that I, I picked up and I was towing. <laughs> if the weather is calm tomorrow, I'm going to go over there and uh, snorkel over and take a look. Uh, it's just too bouncy right now, and it's too late in the day, and, and the water is too silty. You can't see anything. I'm in about eight feet of water, and you just can't see anything. Um, so when I dropped the anchor, because of the weight of those things that were fouled on the propeller, and they and they still are fouled on the propeller, um, 
Um, um, um, I put the anchor down, and for a moment, you know, the bow, you know, points into the wind almost, but then the stern started blowing downwind, and the stern of the boat actually ended up, uh, the boat ended up sideways to the wind, um, because both ends were being held up. The front, the bow was held by the anchor properly, and the stern was being held by this pile of crab pots. So I immediately jumped into wetsuit, threw the rope ladder over the side, snorkel, knife in my hand, and just jumped in. And um, by this point, the back of the boat had begun pointing directly into the wind, and it was pretty rough. I mean, that was very difficult. So I, but the, the there was one rope under tension, under strong tension, and the rudder was holding it. So that's one thing. I need to inspect tomorrow, and uh, it was probably the propeller was holding some too. So there's two things I need to inspect tomorrow, if possible. I can't see them. The water's so silty right here. But I can't run the engine for sure. The rudder has been working. I mean, I was using it even though it was hung up. So, <sighs> I'm just tired now. That was a bit of exercise, real quick high stress stuff too and with the back of the boat pointing into this chop it was really pretty the water was slapping the transom and I mean I was trying to hang on to the auxiliary rudder and, uh, and you know, just to kind of catch my breath before I go down and dive but I, I couldn't catch my breath because the waves were coming bow, 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 and I couldn't even get a breath so finally I, I could reach down with my foot and I found the line, I felt the line under tension, I pulled up as high as I could and grabbed it with my hand. Then I just took a breath and jumped in with a knife and cut like there was no tomorrow until the rope parted. And then, whew, everything settled down. Now I, I snagged the one, I think there's only one that really fouled the boat because I only cut one and the boat was completely free. So that's good. And I think as the boat was going through the water with a line dragging to it and the ball over here and the crab on the trap in the bottom I think all the other ones got swept up like uh, like you're doing a, you know a mine, mine sweeping evolution and I think all the other crab pots the other five were snagged up on the first one so I think when I, I think I think when I cut the one I think I'm the rudder is clear. I know the rope is still wound around the propeller, but it shouldn't be wound too much. And I should be able to go down tomorrow, probably free that without even having to cut anything. Okay, anchor's up. And I'm drifting away from these guys, which is good. But going into shallower water, which is bad. So I need to get a head sail up and turn and get out of here. Releasing the 12 mooring balls that I picked up yesterday, I realize I'm still at him number 13. I'm keeping this one for a fucking souvenir. But it's a sign that, that the other end of that rope is connected to something on my boat. I grounded the boat. <laughs> and what a f***ing couple of 24 hours. Damn! Now I'm aground. Um, I'm going to get the other camera and show you. There's another boat standing by to save me. But he's afraid to come in too close and he'll run aground as well. But uh, he's relaying messages to the U.S. Coast Guard, who is going to relay to Tobo U.S., who's going to tow me off. Um, just stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Doesn't, it's not a good thing to happen today, because if, I mean, the day looked like I was turning around, and I went and fucking ran aground just by cutting across the cape a little too close. And this boat draws five feet, and he's afraid to come this close, so... Tide's still going down a little bit. Um, let me show you what I got going on. Yeah, so this engine is in gear and it's running, trying to pull me forward. And I'm doing that because I believe tide is going to come up. And if you have the wind blowing on you, when the boat starts refloating, it's going to move, you know, further aground. You know? Now, if the tide comes up a full two feet, and then maybe it will, then I should float completely free. And then, I mean, I guess we'd all be fine then. See, see me more. See me more. Uh, they're, they're the ones helping me out, so uh, they sure get a thumbs up and a helping hand. Because you know? uh, without him, 
I was not having any luck getting through to the Coast Guard, and that's the problem. So I, I saw him, and he had just picked up anchor and was heading home back north, I guess, and uh, I, I grabbed him, and he's agreed to stand by for an hour or so. The tow boat is coming. You can see the tow boat off the port starboard bow. Okay guys, it would take honestly an hour to show you all the things we tried to do. The first attempt, at, which is he's doing now, is just trying to tow me traditionally. A line passing through the, uh, the bow pulpit and the boat did not move at all. So, you'll see here we've come back, we've slackened his tow line and I'm retying the tow line around with a bowline loop around my anchor line and he's going to drive away and pass, kind of tug that bowline forward all the way down the rope all the way down the chain all the way to the anchor and then he's going to pick up the anchor itself with his boat you know and then that's what finally broke his free he's attaching the tow line on his boat a really big dyneema line to my anchor itself and he's going to try to pick up the anchor and thereby tow me out of here because my anchor line was under so much strain that we couldn't get um This is a rope and an anchor. Fuck me. Yes, Captain. They're now at one and a half knots. Lovely. Cheers. That's a good. According beer. to my log, I picked up the anchor that morning around <sighs> seven o'clock. I was grounded by ten o'clock. And by 11 o'clock, tow boat showed up, and at 12 o'clock, we were finally free. And at 4 o'clock, I was finally anchored off the Little Shark River, and finally had time to just have that anchor beer and and just watch a beautiful sunset. So that's where I'm at now. I really got my ass kicked the other day, yesterday. I mean, I went aground exactly where one of the soundings said two and a half meters. It should have been like nine feet, you know. And But I went aground, you know. Fuck. And that's after having picked up all the crab pots the day before that. So really, it hasn't been a great trip, but I guess that's the purpose of shaking down. I've been out of this game for about a year, frankly, more than a year, because it was in January of 2023. I turned around and left the Bahamas and came to the USA to work a job. Then I, I did sail down the coast to um, Marathon, but then I sat there again for five months. And if I want to do long-term cruising, I, I have to quit doing that. Those layoffs just make you soft. They make you comfortable. You don't want to do anything. Hell, I just about stayed in Marathon for life. You know? but right now, my reflection is, it's a gorgeous freaking day. I'm in a beautiful place. I've got the whole place to myself. I'm going to try just... Go. Even before leaving Marathon, I knew that by late on day four or five, it was going to, we were going to have a cold front that passes through. This is what the, uh, you know, a simplified map shows, kind of an occluded front, but it's going to pass through in a couple days. So I wanted to move out from this open area into the Little Shark River, which is kind of the only real hurricane hole we have here. Okay, in so southwest florida right now, it's showing about 11 feet i'm aiming for the lower of the two balls there that's the aim point i gave myself which is admittedly 
right in the middle of the freaking river. People won't be too happy with me, but I had about six, about eight, six feet over here, eight feet under a bar. I'm gonna put this out. Okay, the water out here, beyond his wake, I went past that. It's all 12 feet deep. I didn't, over here I saw it down to about nine feet. Um, but I think I'm tending as far to this direction as I'm going to because the wind is coming from that way and I'm already tending. My chain is out there in a U-shape. I, I put the anchor down while I was the boat was moving forward. That's my cheater's way to set it, but you kind of set it the backwards direction. However, I set it for a northwest wind, which is what I'm going to get tomorrow. Northwest is over there, so we're, the winds are going to come, so by tomorrow I'll be flipping around the wind is clocking around to the south and then the west today. So I'm assuming we're going to get a little bit of rolly swell in here. I've got a little bit now. You can see the bow slowly moving up and down. But it's not untenable or anything. We're just about in the time of day when it's safe to come out without getting hit by no seams. Those little bugs are nasty. I'm just shooting this from the cockpit here. You can see the waves out there. That's why I came up inside this river. It would be a really rough day at anchor. It would not be fun at all out there. I'm still in the middle of the river. As you can see, nothing to complain about. I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Up in here. And I came here for this reason alone. I wanted to be in here and not out here when the weather front passed. And it's coming through in the next, over the next couple hours. I can hear thunder now. We're swinging around quite a bit. The interesting thing is, and the wind is coming right now pretty heavily from the west-ish, southwest-ish, something like that. You know, it's kind of moving around, of course, but... What's interesting is that the river current is currently ebbing. Tide's going down. So, tide, so the red red going down means it, red means tide's going down. And when the tide's going down in a river, of course, that means water's moving out to sea. So our boat is pointed into the wind, the correction, into the current. So I'm taking the wind almost directly on the stern, which is kind of weird. It's not, it shouldn't be damaging in any way. It shouldn't be any problem. Right rudder. It's good. I can find it's exactly where I needed to be. That cape up there is the middle cape, and that's where I went aground. Here we are approaching the scene of the crime, so I'm gonna tweak it, Agatha a little more to give her that cape a much wider berth. And then we got 20 miles over that direction to Marathon. Okay, so I believe it's Thursday. The cold front passed last night, so it's pretty rough out here, I'd say, for you know, coastal Florida purposes. You got pretty good swell. I call it two to four, maybe three to six sometimes, but it's getting better the further out I get, actually. The swell, I think, is usually, the, the waves get worse when you're approach land, of course, but I'm, I'm not gonna complain about this. Um, we're making about five knots, and I'm, I'm content and very happy with that. Agatha is behaving really nicely because the wind is so steady right now and pretty about well, 15 knots of wind. 
So the, the waves are going to die down because these waves are bigger than they should be for 15 knots. But again, they were kicked up yesterday by the storm. And it does take about 12 to 24 hours to settle down. Okay, and there it goes down my port side and that means we're right so there it is see that damn thing <laughs> future engine failure there's a line of balls going that way and there's a line of balls out there going that way but I mean the national park boundary is like less than a half a mile away from here so um, I'd like to think that I won't encounter any more. Once I get to the park boundary, I'm just going to run along the edge of it, following markers, actually, until I get to a spot where I want to stop and anchor for the night. It's already 3 p.m. I'm, I'm certainly not going to make it to Marathon today. Come on, baby. Let's go. Oh, my God. You're off course again. Mm. Mm. A little bit cold tonight. <laughs> I'm kind of right back where we started six days ago. I came out through the seven mile bridge and came up through that area, that pass, and then past Bollard Bank, and I'm coming through back this way, a little different heading. <clears throat> um, over there is a the seven mile bridge. Over there is the uh, island of Kivaka, which is called Marathon. Friday the 5th of April, approximately 8 o'clock in the morning. Um, I'm anchored. Anchored last night around 9 p.m.-ish. And I'm in a place called Red Bay Bank. It's not much to speak of. So over here, that's where there's a lot of shallow water, so that makes it a bank by definition. There's a red marker there that identifies it, um, and there's a green marker over there somewhere that I can't quite see at the moment. Okay, so I'm looking at the seven mile bridge, and I really wish now that I had gone through that last night. But see the high part of the bridge? <clears throat> That's what I have to go through. Pretty much a straight shot from here to there. Um, it's about three miles distant, two and a half, I think, two and a half miles away. But last night, it was just a confused picture. Um, so last night, I got in, it says about um, 2050, yeah, 10, 10 before 9 is when I got anchored. And it, Okay, so I was approaching more or less like this from the northwest. Got clear of all the crab pots finally, and it was still light enough to see. So I was thankful that I was able to get past the crab pots while I could see. But by the time I got to Bollard Bank, it was every bit of 9.30, 9.45. I called it 9.40, correction, 7.40, 7.40, 19.40. And I just maintained the same heading and got through the bet between the green and the red to mark Red Bay Bank. Although this red is not working. That red didn't work. I didn't see it, I never did see it, but I did see the green and I used it to sail through here, hung her left, and then this is where I'm at right now. I, I, I milled about smartly for a few minutes and pulled over here and, and anchored, so that's where I'm at now. So, and after a long day, you know, and, and it was already 9 p.m., and I really wanted to get all the way on the other side to Hawk Channel and get anchored over by Boot Key. That would have been my preference, um, but not able to see, you know, and I saw lots of lights out there. You can see all the lights on Marathon, and I could see cars on the bridge. But that's not, but you need to have a really good aim point when you're sailing visually, and at night, I just didn't have one. Approaching Seven Mile Bridge from the north side, Gulf side going to Ocean side. 
I'm cheating pretty close to number eight here and I'm gonna hang a left when I get a few boat lengths past it. There's another boat coming out, which is really kind of the problem right now. He's so he seems to be very slow. And I need him to get the hell out from under the bridge so I can get a clear pass through. Look at us go. Four knots. We need the wind right now. We haven't needed it. I approach the bridge entrance. I turned the engine on and had it running in standby just in case the wind should suddenly die because I was kind of operating with I would call a fickle winds and I was right at the point where the sails would luff if I had to turn at all. So no, I think that's a good practice and I was happy I did that. Yep. Sometimes I come pretty close. We're heading for the next red, and once we're past that, we're going to head straight east. Over there, there's Marathon. That's what I'm trying to get to. Sailing into Marathon. I'm going to anchor over here by that guy, or the next guy, someplace, um, for a little while. <laughs> That was a busy friggin' seven days, I'll tell you that. I left on Saturday morning, and here it is Friday afternoon the next week, so no complaints at all. Nothing to complain about. Learned lots of stuff, did lots of stuff. Oh my god. I really like getting underway from anchor and anchoring without using the engine and i did it here and you can see the first thing i do when i point into the wind to depower the sails then i drop the anchor and then i drop the sails and then i'm formally anchored and not under power anymore but within just a couple of moments well two hours even i was underway again and i picked the anchor back up with the engine on this time and the sails completely stowed as you can see and headed into uh, the mooring field because I had an opportunity to pick up a, a, a mooring ball for a few weeks and I thought yeah, that's too good to turn down so I grabbed it. Of course I would never go into the mooring field without first setting up my mooring lines. You know, I have the boat hook already laying on the deck and here I am running the line down the port side. It's already attached to a cleat on the bow and it runs through the pulpit so this line is going to be secured on the midship's cleat you know, on the port side and then all I have to do is grab the mooring ball and pass this line through the pennant on the mooring ball and then I'll be secure once I get in there. But you got to get ready before you head in. When you're single-handed you don't have a crew to, to do this for you so you have to be 100% ready to go as a single-handed. a beautiful day that I really had to include some of this video. Now there's a guy in the dinghy right off my starboard bow. He also owns a CSY and I didn't understand at first why he was following me. And then I was contending with a couple of power boats and you see the white power boat that just passed me? That thing was sitting right in the center of the channel for the longest time and it kept pushing me off to the starboard so I finally just yelled at him and he got out of the way and now I'm looking for a mooring ball you three uniform hyphen three and once i get to the ball there it is going by i do a u-turn and come by and position myself upwind of the boat correction upwind of the ball and then i slowly blow down on top of the ball and then i you know i'll get out there and snag it with a hook
Okay, Mord. That has been a full fucking day. <laughs> oh my god. Air in the boat is number one. <laughs> yeah, I've been by myself for years on the boat, so I learned to take the moorings on the side, not the bow. Yeah. Much easier. You just yeah, get, just yeah, you just get upwind and rope blow right on top of the bow. So, but still, I get a little antsy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for watching the video, guys. This is Russ, sailing vessel Tell Tug. I know it's been a long video. And I really don't want to prolong it unnecessarily. I mean, at a very high level, I would say it was a busy seven days underway. And I'm tired still. Uh, this is a day and a half later. My arms are still sore from all the anchor pulling and anchor dropping. But again, at that high level, the whole, the difficult part about sailing is entering and exiting port, entering rivers, dropping anchors, picking anchors up. That, for me, is a difficult part because I single hand all the time. And so I think... Having a week full of that, it does wear me out, but knowing that in a normal journey, like a trip to Belize, for instance, if that's what I'm thinking about, you know, that's going to be, you know, release the mooring, get underway, get the sails up, and then you don't really change a whole lot except sail configuration, you know, for four or five days. You know, it's just a matter of managing the boat. And so the cruising on a longer trip is much, much easier than what I've been doing for a week. If, if every week was like this past week, that's just too damn much work for an old guy like me. So, but I wanted to share that with you. So my location, to be honest, is back in um, Marathon, Florida. I'm on a different mooring ball, on ball U1, which is about half a mile from my last mooring spot. But still pretty good spot, still pretty good neighbors, and I've got no complaints. There's a few things I want to buy um, before I go, and the top one is a satellite system. I'm probably going to buy the Starlink tomorrow and order that and get that delivered. I need to get engine spares on board, and I need to do a few other things that you, know, you have to order. And I'm going to plan to drive up to Homestead as well to buy some bulk supplies, things that are harder to find here at a much, much lower price. So... That's the kind of stuff I'm going to be doing the next two weeks. I did find one lock washer and a nut lying on the main deck under the mast, so i got to figure that out. Like, where in the hell, you know, did that come from? Um, of course, you got to figure that one out. And, but I really don't have any repairs to make. Nothing really broke on the boat. So I'm very, very pleased with the trip overall, except for the fact, of course, my dumbass ran aground. You know, that that's just stupid, but... Again, that's why you shake down. You kind of get your mind back in the game. So um, it's all good here, guys. I really appreciate watching a long video, and I hope you have a lot of comments. I love reading these things, and I love responding. Um, and I expect to be back underway two to three weeks, and we're heading out again. So cheers, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.